Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Heather Abbott. It's my pleasure to welcome you to another Healthy by Choice Masterclass. Tonight's subject is going to be bone and joint health. Uh, the professor is Dr. Gary Lindner. He has a PhD in physiology. He's a former faculty member for UC Davis, and he's also currently an adjunct professor at Chico State University here in California. So Dr. Lindner, if you don't mind unmuting, um, and, you know, bone health to me is interesting because it's such a misunderstood subject, so we, we can't wait to see what you got to share with us. Well, well thank you, Heather, and I, want to, and I want to thank you, and I think you all, everyone else uh, tuning in tonight will want to thank you for the great slides you put together for this presentation. You did an awesome job. So let's get started, and uh, this week's class, like Heather said, we're going to talk about bone and joint health. But we always start with basically our, our self-care, the self-care awakening. And we ask the question, and if you haven't seen a copy of our magazine, ask the person that invited you on here. It's available electronically at the selfcarehub.com. Uh, to where you can take a look at, at some of the major subjects we talk about. But I don't think we can put a price on our health because without it, we pretty much don't have much of anything. We define self-care as a process, an active process through which people become aware of and make choices for a healthier life. Uh, we bring an awareness to the problem, why the problem exists or why we have the problem, and then solutions to the problem so that we can all be healthy by choice. And our solutions are found within the Nikan Wellness Home where we address healthy air, water, sleep, natural energies, and whole food nutrition. Last week, we talked about water matters. And basically, we focused on how dehydration uh, affects our immune efficiency. So if you want to review that, that uh, video is posted on our, our social media channels at the Self Care Hub and at the, our YouTube channel. So take a look at that. And one of the reasons I wanted to start with water is because our bones are about 25 to 30 percent water. And one thing we can do is stay well hydrated. So if we look at these two pictures, we see normal bone matrix on the left and a thinning bone or osteoporotic bone on the right. And you can see the difference, the dramatic difference between these two. So the problem. And this is, I'll give a personal story uh, about this too. But the problem is you will not fall and break your bone. You will break your bone and then fall. And what we're referring to here is most people don't know they have a problem uh, until they've broken a bone. And it's called the silent disease. Osteoporosis has been called the silent disease. And that was a good example with my father, Mort Lindner. Uh, Mort was a, a, a golfer. He loved to golf. Uh, in his later years, that was a lot of his social aspect and all his buddies and played a couple times a week. And he was walking through a doorway and he was in his late sixties at the time. And he was walking through a doorway. He hit his wrist on the door frame and it shattered his wrist. Um, he, he had it cast, he had it set. They tried to get it to heal, but he, they, they told him basically the reason being is he was osteoporotic and he did not even know it. Um, it kind of affected his whole life because uh, my dad liked to do things and do them to the best and <laughs> that he could, and he just never could without a real functional wrist, uh, could, could get his golf game back to where it originally was before he fractured that wrist. So that kind of effective, affected him in his weekly activities. It affected him within the group of people and the guys he hung out with, and, and it was a big issue for him. I, I, I know it was. So osteoporosis is a global disease. Uh, it's estimated one in three and one in five men over 50 will have a bone fracture due to this problem. Over 200 million people are affected globally, and 55% of people over 50 are, are at an increased risk of fracture due to low, low bone mass. And studies also indicate that currently teenagers are at risk, and, and we were talking about that before we started tonight's class. And reason being is, you know, more sedentary lifestyles, uh, uh, maybe too many video games and not enough time outside and getting enough vitamin D and, and exercise, which will help strengthen the bones. Um, the other thing, too, is uh, 
uh, I have a lot of clients that are athletes and, and uh, marathon runners and 5K runners. And uh, I highly advise them to uh, have, have uh, bone scans uh, or DEXA scans, one or the other, and, and check their bones because they use a lot of calcium. And as we'll see through the presentation, we derive most of those minerals and that calcium from our bones uh, for our muscles to, to work. So if we are exercising excessively, um, we really need to uh, uh, take care of that calcium and calcium metabolism. So let's talk about the bones for a minute. Um, a lot of people think of it as this very rigid, static structure, uh, which it's not. It's a very dynamic organ, and it's our second largest organ next to our skin. And it provides many physical and physiological functions. So the first is it provides a structural support for our body and a way that we can segue and move uh, with the muscle attachments so we can be mobile. The second is it provides a protective armor for our vital organs. And I think we can all agree that's pretty important. It's nice that we have a skull that protects our brain. You know? So if we bump it, we aren't damaging our brain. Uh, so I think we can all agree that that's a good thing. The other thing is it's where we manufacture our blood cells, our red blood cells, as well as our white blood cells for a healthy immune system. And just recently, they've, they've been looking at the, uh, skeletal, uh, uh, at the skeleton as a endocrine or, or, organ uh, that modulates glucose tolerance and uh, testosterone uh, production by specific uh, bone proteins called osteocalcin. Uh, so the third thing, or the fourth thing we're gonna talk about is the bone supply all of our organs, and it is with minerals, and it is a mineral bank for our entire system and that's really the the function we're going to focus on in tonight's in tonight's class so let me say this all organs need bone minerals let me say it again all organs need bone minerals our brain needs about 150 milligrams a day to stay sharp our heart for steady heartbeat about 100 milligrams a day and our digestive system, anywhere from 600 to 900 milligrams a day, just to move food through the intestines, through, through uh, uh, what we call peristaltic contractions, which involve muscles that move food through the alimentary and the intestinal system. So we really need these minerals. So the way this is supplied is what we call bone remodeling. And there are two specialized cells. The first is the osteoclast, and, and think of it as a, a cell that clears, with a C, osteoclast, clears away and tears down old bones. And this releases calcium and minerals to the organs, and, this, and it recycles the older bone, the more fragile bone. The second is what we call an osteoblast for a builder cell. And this is the cell that deposits new and releases new bone construction markers and lays down the formation of new healthy bone. So it's this constant remodeling that's not only supplying minerals to our body, but also keeping our bones very uh, 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 structurally uh, competent. And, you know, people think of the, these bones. So what I'm saying is, is this is constantly going on. We're remodeling these bones. We replace our entire skeleton about every 10 years. So it's not that static, rigid structure like the frame of a house or a building that most people think of it. It's a very dynamic, uh, vital organ. So this is calcium physiology 101. And it's, uh, bear with me with this, it's, it'll, it'll take some time to go through, but I think it's at the crux of why we have an issue with low bone mass. And, and so let's, uh, we first start with ingesting food and food with minerals. And specifically, when I'm talking about calcium here, it's the main one we're talking about, but we're talking about some other bone minerals as well. And in our bodies, we have these mineral managing molecules. The first thing we need to do is absorb those minerals from the food. All right, so we absorb that, we absorb them into the gut. 
The next is they need to be picked up by the circulatory system and transported to the site of conversion. All right, and that is usually the synovial joints, the spaces in between our bones. Then the cells come in, the osteoblast, osteoclast, uh, <coughs> come in to release those minerals to supply to our organs and keep them healthy and thriving. Now, this pathway is, is often a pathway that most health professionals forget from their schooling, and, and they think that uh, just calcium uh, supplementation many times could be a, a solution for the problem, but we're going to talk about this. So as we age, what happens is we don't manufacture the mineral managing molecules, and this usually starts to happen in our mid to late 20s. So what happens is we don't absorb enough of the minerals, we don't transport enough, we don't get enough conversion, all right, but we are still releasing to supply our body's organs with the minerals it needs, and we end up with a very Swiss cheese, uh, weak looking bone, as we see here with the osteoporotic bone. So if we want to, be like I said, many times people say, well, I'll just increase my calcium intake with calcium rich foods, leafy green vegetables, or with supplements. Problems still exist, that we will not absorb a much, as much because we don't have the mineral managing molecules to do so. As we age, we don't transport as much, we don't have as much conversion, and we end up, again, with um, very uh, pruritic bones. We still need to release those minerals from the bones to supply our organs, and our bones are thinning when we need the need to do so. So calcium supplementation on its own can be a problem. And, and many times it can lead, lead to uh, other issues such as calcium spurs or pseudo gout. Uh, many people taking calcium supplements sometimes have some heart and blood pressure issues, uh, kidney stones or muscle pains. And again, this is all related to the metabolism of calcium and these minerals. So let's say we have some bone loss issues and we go to the doctor, to a physician, and he says, okay, we have pharmaceutical drugs for this. And basically they're all, most of them are under one category that they're called bisphosphonates. But we still don't have the absorption, the transport, and then the bisphosphonates basically are to block the calcium uh, uh, release from the bones. And what happens then is we start to, to uh, starve our organs and there's many different side effects that, that occur with this as well. So in other words, we, we still don't have absorption, we don't have the transport, we still need some conversion, we still need some release, but the bisphosphonates acting on the osteoclast to shut down it so that it won't release as much of the old bone. And we can show this diagrammatically here to where it's actually shutting down the osteoclast. Um, recently, and I'm saying, you know, within the last 10 years or so, they have also found that these bisphosphonates not only shut down the osteoclast, the clear away cell, but also shuts down the osteoblast, which is the new bone builder cell. And what that results in is a very brittle bone where people have reported stepping off a curb or going up a step and fracturing the largest bone in their body, their femur. Um, you can take a look at a number of news stories, just Google uh, what we might call frozen bone. And you can see a number of news stories and, and different articles on, on this happening with people that have taken bisphosphonates. Uh, for a number of years. About currently, they're saying do not take them for more than five years. So there's risks here with, with side effects from bisphosphonates too. And this is a partial list. It could be bigger. Uh, but one of the main problems is jaw decay. They call osteonecrosis of the jaw, where it actually alters the blood flow to the jaw and the jaw bones start to die. And there are thousands of lawsuits that are pending and in the process 
uh, from some of these, uh, including the frozen bone problem that I mentioned. Uh, one of the first things people that I have met or that I know that I've talked to and consulted with on this prescription drug, um, one of the side effects that they relate to me very commonly is heartburn uh, and some gut problems. And, and really that's just the, uh, again, a result of disruption of that mineral metabolism and, and the organs not having enough calcium. So what if there was a natural bone solution that had natural ingredients, we had some scientific validation, and there weren't side effects, in fact, maybe we even, even some side benefits. And that's what we have with the Neken Wellness Home products, the Neken's Bone Pack. We have a calcium complex, and I'm gonna talk about both of these individually, and then also we have the Kenzin BDZ, which helps optimize bone and joint health, calcium absorption, and a target delivery of these nutrients uh, to, the, to the site of metabolism or conversion, just like we were talking about. So Niken's calcium complex is a natural uh, formulation. It's made with true cal. It's naturally sourced calcium for the bone structure. It also has phosphorus, magnesium, iron, zinc, and copper that are important for different aspects of the skeletal system. The BDZ has MenaQ7. It's a patented vitamin K2, and you can look each one of these up. Uh, there's a lot of research on these. Aquaman, which is a, a, a marine plant multi-mineral complex, rich in calcium, magnesium, and trace minerals, and very bioavailable. Uh, we have paractin which helps, helps with bone formation, resorption, uh, with stimulation of those cells, uh, the osteoblast and the osteoclast, uh, to improve skeletal muscle strength. So it's also gluten-free and GMO-free. So without drugs, just a little bit of review. Our body manufactures a mineral managing molecule. After age 20, 25, that production drops. Uh, bones, joints, and organs miss these minerals. The answer is to replenish those compounds that we don't produce anymore to restore normal metabolism. So we have the calcium complex, the Kenzin BDZ. We help with absorption. Then we help with the transport to the synovial joint for metabolism and conversion and we have released and we have reestablished normal mineral metabolism through our skeletal structure so that we are releasing the minerals that our organs need. So trade-in side effects for side benefits. How about strong bones? How about you have a sharp, clear mind? Active bowels and stable sugar metabolism, healthy blood and durable teeth and joints. So there's one more product that I wanna talk about. It's actually two products. Um, and this is one that uh, I use daily. I actually use both of them daily uh, for, for healthy joints. And the uh, study referenced here in the Journal of Rheumatology used the active components of both these products, acetylmeristoliate. Uh, uh, you can look up this, this link if you want and read the study, but I'm going to summarize some of their results. So the product on the left is a capsule. We call it simply joint. Uh, the product on your right is, has still the active ingredient, acetylmeristoliate, which is what the CM stands for. And that's a topical cream. I love it to just to rub it on my hands. Uh, it's also, it's a very good anti-inflammatory. Um, the joint uh, capsules I take uh, uh, daily uh, and it helps keep me more flexible, um, I, can, I can move easier. Uh, I know it helps my golf game. Doesn't necessarily lower my score a lot, but it, it uh, makes playing golf more fun, which is kind of tough to do if you're, if you're having some joint issues. So here's the study. So this is a, I'm gonna explain this, and, and here it is. This is a 60-day study using a placebo, which is marked in the blue color, uh, and then also those receiving the acetylmeristoliate, the CMC group, in the yellow. And what they looked at is range of motion in far as knee flexion. And there's nearly a 10 degrees increase in knee flexion in those receiving the CM. 
Now, you may think to yourself, 10 degrees doesn't sound like much improvement, but let me tell you, it is. That's the difference from being able to walk up a step or a stair or get up or sit down without assistance. So it's a huge as far as it's huge as far as our self-reliance. Here's the next thing they looked at is how far people could walk in 15 minutes. And we basically in, increased to about a half a mile in those that were taking the CM. Again, more self-reliance, more freedom. Uh, and I, I mean, this is huge. I mean, it really is to where they're going less than, than 800 feet to 2,300 feet. Like I said, about half a mile in 15 minutes. And here's the discomfort, how much they hurt. And basically about a 50% reduction from the people receiving the acetylmeristoliate as opposed to those that receive the placebo. And again, within a 60 day period. So very, very profound results. So I've been an advocate for the Nikan Wellness Home for nearly 22 years or a little over 22 years actually. And um, I invite you to take a look at our product line, at the way that we can make your home the healthiest environment possible with healthy air, healthy water, a good restful quality sleep, uh, how to provide natural energies to your body, and also how to support your body with healthy whole food nutrition. And we talked about some of these. We also, so we see the musculoskeletal system with the Kenzin BDZ, the calcium complex and the, and the Kenzin joint. Uh, but we also have a core system. We have products to help with your nervous system, your gastrointestinal system, cardiovascular system, and we have immune support in there too with our healthy whole food nutrition. So with that, I'd like to invite you to be part of our global, and it's, it's easy to do, uh, to find out more information of how you can do that and help yourself be healthy by choice and help others be healthy by choice. Get back to the person that invited you to tonight's class. And uh, I wanna thank you for taking the time to join us this evening.